Worldwide, an estimated 1.8 million people are bitten by snakes each year and around 138,000 die. It's hoped this study could help save lives. Tian Du is the lead author from the University of Sydney and she joins me now in the studio. Uh, Tian, thank you so much uh, for coming in to speak to us about this. The research that you've done, it's still in rats, but just how exciting is it for you mm -hmm. and what did you undertake? Um, thanks for having me, Kath. Yeah, so at the moment we've done um, this in my studies, but the cobra venoms that we're targeting and looking at, as you mentioned, um, many people worldwide die from them, but also many survive. But then the tissue damage that the cobra venom um, in does to people can have lasting effects, so causing disability or severe scarring. Mm. So really we wanted to look at that tissue damage and try and find a treatment for that, because there is no anti-venom that can treat that uh, currently. Yeah, so it's interesting. So you found that heparin, which is a really common and inexpensive blood thinning medication, mm -hmm. you've had some results and some positive results with respect to that. So how does it work differently to the antivenom, which is expensive? Yep, so like you said, the antivenoms are expensive. You, They rely on this method where you have to inoculate, say, a large animal, such as a horse or a sheep, and then you collect the antibodies. And that has to be um, refrigerated. Um, it's very expensive to produce, and then you have to get to a hospital, basically, to administer this to a patient. So being able to find a drug that is stable at room temperature, really cheap to produce, already available on the market, means that this can be distributed to people so that they can immediately use it after a snake bite. And the antibodies from the antivenoms actually can't travel to the periphery, like your limbs, your arms, where you generally get bitten. So being able to inject that locally as well would be um, a brilliant Thing to have. Okay, so uh, we don't have cobras here in Australia, but we've got plenty of other nasties. We've got black snakes, brown snakes, red belly snakes. How could this preliminary re research that you found uh, apply to the snakes here in Australia? Yep, so basically the method that we've used to discover the heparin, um, it's using CRISPR gene editing. And there's a little bit complicated, but essentially we look at what genes the venom is actually attacking on the human cells. So the cobras is one story, but we can also take the venoms from our Australian animals, such as the red belly black snake, which I'm looking at, and also blue bottle jellyfish. And we can basically um, understand how those venoms work. And potentially there's a drug that's like heparin that we can use in the future to prevent um, the pain associated with those venoms. So what is the next step in the research for this? I presume it's, it's human trials phase one? Yeah, so we would, um, at the moment it's just um, in mice, but we would like to progress um, this into humans. And luckily because heparin is already FDA approved, it's safe for use, that can be progressed quite rapidly. But we do obviously, um, as a team, need funding for that as well. Now I was fascinated, uh, more on a personal note, Tian, that you you have a neuroscience background and this research with the snakes sort of caught your attention. You said to me before that, you know, these antivenoms have these amazing toxin, um, these amazing toxins within that could mm -hmm. be used and analysed for other areas of science. How so? Yeah, so um, I've grown up always loving creepy crawlies, but I, I wanted to study the brain, of course. But basically, um, in the future, maybe I could like melt, men, uh, meld these two together. So the toxins that are within venoms, they've evolved over millions of years with us. So they have really specific targets on our cells. So potentially there could be um, things that we can take out of those and use as drugs that can um, prevent neurodegeneration and stuff to do with the brain. So putting those two together in the future would be great. Who would have thought? Um, some fascinating work that you're doing there, Tian Du. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Kath.